Okay, so, hello, I'm Swift, and, uh, I got a message asking me to explain how to use Challenge to set up a, a Roost tournament. Now, that is, uh, sort of complicated to explain while writing, so I thought I might as well do a video in case anyone else wanted to set up a tournament. You know, the, the, the community needs this sort of st stimulation, you know, I think, uh, we, we used to run tournaments, uh, Deagle still runs ones, but they, they have to take place over a longer period of time now because um because not enough people join for like live ones so so you play one game a day or or something like that but because um yeah people just stop coming so uh this is one that's on console so it's great that uh the cults community can sort of get organized like this so anyway um it's relatively simple uh I just go to challenge here. Uh, obviously, create an account. It's fairly simple, straightforward um, type of thing. Username, email address, password, or you can even use Facebook. Um, I don't think you need to create an account at all. That's. Uh, so I'm just going to log in, and Firefox saves my details. So. Uh, now, my challenges, these are ones that uh, I've hosted or created, so there's quite a lot here, going back a while. No, I don't think I created all of these. No, no, they also include ones I'm in. Maybe they only include ones I'm in. By the way, it's not particularly important. So, um, right now I'm only in this 2v2 tournament for Ruse. Just load, see what a bracket's like, maybe. Um, this is um, match voting. Yeah, it's a nice little feature. Um, here's me. Um, can't see it. That's my email address, because you need some sort of contact. And Tigger, who I'm playing with. So, um, yeah, it's her 2v2 tournament, which uh, has come to a bit of a halt, because the games aren't playing for some reason. But, either way, um, now if I go back to where I was before my dashboard... If you're going to create a new challenge, um, well, that enables you to create a new challenge. So you choose an event name, so, uh, example event, um, type, single elimination, double el elimination, round robin, or Swiss. Now, I don't really think I'm going to explain what, what these do. Swiss's point system, round robin, is everyone plays everyone. Double elimination is uh, you had to lose twice to be knocked out. Single elimination. As soon as you lose, you get knocked out. That's a short version elimination. Swiss is complicated, and you, and you know you can have a look at these yourself. So um, let's just leave that. And I don't know. Usually for roost tournaments, we play double elimination. Uh, so let's play with that category. Well, strategy or RTS for ruse. Um, I don't think this really matters. Uh, it helps them gauge category popularity and prioritize new feature development. Great. So, you know, if you want to help them do that, that's great. Now, subdomain. This is, if you want to stay organized, um, you can create a subdomain, which uh, uh, I don't think uh, I will go into in this. It's 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 quite simple. But, um, so I have a subdomain, which I think Persian created, actually, or, or you know, someone, anyway, one of... Uh, People, the people that I play Ruse with, <laughs> created this, and but it just helps us uh, because we not one person hosts the tournaments every time, so we just all add them to this. We all have access to this, so um, we can do you know, it's, so it keeps it organized. This is what it looks like, just in progress and past challenges. As you can see, this is all the challenges we've ever um, hosted. So Deagle has organized all of the past ones, the last one I organized, 10th of April, that's, that's when it died down, um, around about, so, yeah, and this dates all the way back, like, we, we didn't always have this, but this dates all the way back to 1990, wow, that's an American date, what is that, 19th of September, right, yes, <laughs> Sorry, I don't I don't do the American dates now. Um So URL you just choose anything that's available, so challenge.com slash challenge probably isn't available. Uh I was gonna 
uh, show me challenges not available so that'll show up if it's not available um, what if I put ruse and today's date is the 24th of June so ruse 24th of June that's available um, so say I had that now um, the signups I will provide a list of participants that is you enter all the names yourself or I want you to launch to host a sign up page this is what we usually do Require users to sign up with challenge accounts. Um, usually, I I wouldn't set this because it just I don't think there's a point. Um, really, I don't see a point in it anyway. There probably is a use for it, which is why it's there. But um, anyway, so I get challenge to host a sign up page, and I would post the link on the for on the Ubisoft forums, um, and you know people would see it and sign up. Uh, 6 minutes 15 into the video. I might cut it a bit though, so don't count on that. Uh, you can add a description, you know, anything anything about it. Rules, you know, uh, I don't know. 40 min limit. We have a map rotation because, well, generally a lot of people don't like some maps or they aren't good for competitive use, like D-Day is not symmetrical and stuff. So, um, now you've got these bracket options. Hide the seed numbers. Um, well, I suppose that hides the seed numbers. Uh, <laughs> I don't think it would really matter unless you're doing a long-term thing and you actually had seeds. So, um... Uh, seeds. No, no. Ah, never mind. Now, um, allow match attachments. Now, we always use this because it allows people to upload replays. Obviously, if you are on a console, I don't think you can say replays. In fact, I'm, I'm almost sure you can't. Uh, I've never played it on the console myself, so I don't know. But um, well, I played the demo. But anyway, uh, so it allows people to upload screenshots, or replays, or anything, any attachment. I'm not sure what the file size limit is, but um, yeah. So we we keep this enabled so people can upload replays. Um, label each round above the bracket. Well, I'm. Probably sure that would label it round one, round two, round three, uh, if you want that. Um, review results before ending this challenge. I haven't seen this before, this is new. This option allows you to review all submitted results before the challenge ends and becomes uneditable. Oh, okay. I don't think that would be important for a, a tournament. I'm not sure. Hide the forum page. Uh, um, yeah, uh, uh, we've never used the challenge forms, so I have no idea what that does. Exclude this event from public browsable index. Well, that self-describable. Just if you don't want other people to be able to see it, um, you can exclude it, like uh, like that. Um, share my user. This is if you want other people to be able to admin this tournament. So if uh, you know, I can enter their challenge usernames. So say I want to take it to admin this. And I select Tigger. I'm always using Tigger for examples. Anyway, like that. Now, uh, notifications. We usually just send out the fan results. Notify users. This is if you're doing a long term one. Um, maybe that would be useful. It sends emails to people saying your next game for challenge is available or something like that. Now, enable voting op for open matches. Uh, I showed that before, didn't I? I hopefully, this one isn't. T oh, this one will be too far back. For it, uh, I forgot a previous test to show you. This one had it, yeah. Um, so yeah, it just uh, you can vote um, on people. So if I just vote in no particular order. I don't, I don't know. Uh, Brahmin fire. Why not have to have to stay friendly and bad seventies deagle actually. Um, so anyway, it shows you percentages on people. Oh, look, I put out to fifty percent stalemate there, but uh. So that that's how voting works. We we just usually put it in. It's kind of cool. Allows people. I mean, it has no effect on the result, obviously. But it's just uh, you know, if people think there's some high ranked player who would win, they can do that, and it's fun. So we would usually enable voting. Um, and that's about it. So, say so I saved and continued and exclude this event probably. Um. Uh, and I would usually label each round anyway, because I like, I think it's neat, you know, I like it. <laughs> so, um, then it hosts a sign up page, so people can sign up for this tournament right here. 
So let's say I went here, it shows your little description, which I wrote rules, 40 min limit, map rotation. Um, signed up? No one. So say I signed up Swift. And if if um, if you're running a 2v2 or a 3v3 or anything, we usually just keep it as one team. One person signs up per team, like it says here. And for team tournaments, only one person per team should sign up. So say I had Swift, and, and I'm not going to take it against Swift, and uh, player 2. Yes, player 2. And say it was a 3v3, and, and player 3, if I could spell that right, sign me up. Swift and player two and player three. Yes, I have great friends. Player two and player three. Um, inbox. That's just little messages. I haven't checked that. Now, um, so I said unregister me. Very simple, easy. Um, now, as you're the uh, admin uh, or owner or whatever, you can also add people yourself. So, Swift uh, and player one again. <laughs> uh, so I can add them myself, and uh, you can remove players. Like even if you didn't send them up yourself, if someone else joined and they have no link to Ruse or anything, or just I don't know why, but uh, or they di or they didn't show up or something, you can remove them and they're gone. Um, we recommend shuffling seeds because otherwise it'll do it so it's like the first person versus the second person, or the and or the first person versus the last person, second versus second last, or, or something like that. It does it in some kind of order. Uh, so if you randomize it, it you know makes it a lot more random, more fair. So um, say I had one participant, or I'll probably have to have two actually. Um, to be able to preview the bracket, so Swift one and Swift two. Uh, and now reload the page, and now I have a preview of my bracket now. <laughs> and even though this is a double elimination because I only have two participants, so actually we'll just do three and four. There we go, that should do. Uh, there we go. So this is what double elimination looks like. Um, I'm running out of time here, so I better get this done fast. Um, um, yeah, it's, it's that simple. That That's about it. Uh, so, you know, um, whoever loses here goes down to uh, loser of A. So loser of A goes to here. So losers fight losers, and you know if you if you lose once, you can always fight your way back to the final. Um, now, so, so once you've done all that, it's it's pretty simple. Um, you just publish the challenge. Now, I might as well do that, I think, uh, <laughs> and then start this challenge. You, you have to do this, or else it, it won't work. Uh, it it won't start, if you know what I mean. Uh, you know, you won't be able to uh, add results and stuff. So I will vote for Swift and Swift because they both have the name in it. Yeah, 100% each. So let's say now it does it does automatically input the percentage for some reason. I don't know why it does that. But um, so say uh, I would we just use one for a win and zero for a a loss usually. So submit. And um let's have let's have Swift to lose, unfortunately. Um so it would be like this. So um anyone can report. You usually the you have to change the winner. So usually the um that we would have the winner report. Uh yeah. And uh, it's that simple. So then it, the whole bracket should change, refresh, you know, so it's like this and you can vote again. Um and that's how it works. So uh I hope I explained that well enough because I really, going over it, can't remember if I explained everything. <laughs> um, anyway, so uh, that's how you would create a challenge page.